I am an automation nut. Sometimes I spend more time creating an automated task to repeat a simple job than it would take to just do the job. But the goal, the ultimate ideal, is to write these automation scripts so that you'll never have to do these laborious tasks manually again. You can do this with AutoHotKey. AutoHotKey has its own scripting language that allows you to simulate keystrokes, mouse clicks, call system commands, you name it. But like I said, you often spend more time writing the script than it takes to do the actual work. No longer. I have written the script to end all scripts. It's a macro recorder. It will record everything you type and click, then repeat it with a simple keystroke. No need to code anything. It codes the script for you. I exaggerate though. You may still want to adjust the script to do more advanced stuff. And you can still do that. The special key you register allows you to run the macro by a single tap. Hold the key to initiate a recording, and long press to edit the source. I'm not actually that good with AutoHotKey. I'm a Java programmer, not an expert in this weird AHK scripting crap. Most of the hard work was done by Fei Yu. I updated his script to the new version of AHK and heavily modified it to my own needs. Heavily, heavily modified it. A lot of these macro recording tools suffer from feature creep. Too much user interface when all you need is one key to do everything you need. Trust me, I've tried nearly all of them. Look at this one. Is that 100 buttons? Hilarious. Okay, this is how it works. You can start the script like any other AHK script by double-clicking the file. That should work if you have AHK version 2 installed correctly. You might want to change the key that it's tied to by editing the file. The key to change is right here. The file name of the macro script saved to temporary storage is here. You can restart it by clicking reload in the menu. It's actually designed so that you can have multiple copies of this running at the same time. Open the AHK script from the command line or a batch file and pass in the key and file name as parameters. Okay, so this is the workflow. I'm going to open a text editor as an example. I hold my key, F1 in my case, until I see the text record on the screen and let go. It's now in recording mode. It's fine, you don't have to rush. Type a phrase. Then press your special key again. That stops the recording. Then you can press that same button again. Just a quick tap and it will repeat the phrase you typed. It doesn't matter what window I'm in, it just works. Let's practice making a clicking macro. I like rolling a d20 when I'm playing games like AI Dungeon, but I don't like moving my hands from the keyboard to reach the mouse. Hold the special key, release, then click the roll button. I want the keyboard focus to go back to AI Dungeon, so I'm going to click the window. Press the special key to stop. Now when I press the key, it clicks the button for me, then I'm immediately back to playing my game. Let's check out the source code. Hold the key for a long time. It first says record, then it says show source. You'll see that there's a lot of commented code here. That makes it easy to turn on and turn off features. In VS Code, the shortcut is control and slash. See these blocks that say window? I'm going to uncomment those lines, then comment out the screen lines. This will make my clicks relative to the selected window instead of using absolute screen coordinates. You'll also need to change the coordinate mode to window. All that uncommenting is a lot of work though. I'm incredibly lazy. Remember, I like automation to do tedious work for me. Look at the top. I made configurable options to change the mouse mode. Let's change it to Window. Save, then it works as you would expect. The reason I have the comments is that you may want to change the mode that you're working in without recording the macro all over again. You may want to mix and match too. Relative mode is useful when you're doing a clicking or dragging movement that is not anchored to any specific location on the screen. For example, I can do some simple movements and it will replicate it wherever I place the cursor. 
It's not perfect though. It only records direct point-to-point -point movement. When the macro plays, it repeats the steps really fast. That's fantastic when the computer can keep up. Sometimes it's important to record the delay between each action. For example, there's an animation that plays when I get out of action mode in this game. That prevents the second click from working. So if you go into the source, you can uncomment the sleep line or simply change this setting to true and record again. That's everything I have for the script. Feel free to modify it as you see fit. Thanks for watching. We have existed this way for thousands of years. Who are you to challenge our ways?